Okay, let's get started. What you need for this one is a bucket, whatever size you want. I like these big, tall, flat buckets. Um, some type of tool like pliers or vice grips to take this handle off. Your balloon pump, of course. 350 balloons, whatever color you want your base. And I am using these pond rocks, decorative rocks that I got at Lowe's to weight it down. It could be whatever you wanted to weight it down. But I'm using these and I'm just putting it inside this box to weight it down. It doesn't really matter, but I don't want it to look yucky <laughs> if uh, my client takes the bucket or base apart. I don't want them to find like dirt or something in there or rocks that looks kind of ugly. So that's what I'm using. And you want duct tape and maybe Gorilla tape. So this is what I'm using. And let's get started. too loose either so that should be good enough and then I'm going to put the lid on I do not want that to open so I'm going to duct tape it well I'm going to use gorilla tape that's some good stuff I'm gonna tape it the whole way around I do not want that coming off and then I'm gonna tape the whole way around this box. And make sure your tape's not sticking out because you don't want it to get stuck on your balloons and you don't want your balloons to pop anything. So I have that and I'm going to put it down in the bottom of my bucket like this. And then we need something like pliers or something to remove this handle. I actually just used wire cutters and made a couple snips and made a little slot for the handle to come out. It was a lot easier. And then the other side came right out. Now what you wanna do is you wanna tape and cut it, tuck it up around this rim because this is sharp and we don't want anything to pop our balloons. So I'm hoping I have enough white duct tape, but I'm gonna go around the edge because it's a little on the sharp side. And I think I'm gonna take this sticker off because it looks a little tacky. So let's do that first, if you can. Okay, I was a little impatient and it did not come off that great, but it's better than it was. So let's start taping. Take your duct tape and just kinda of go around that sharp edge and tuck it in. Make sure no sticky parts are out because they can pop your balloons. I'm just gonna press this down as I go around it. Okay, this is all gonna be covered with balloons. I think this rim is a little bit sharp too, so I'm gonna go around it too. And just press it all down really good. If you missed a spot or your tape came up, just go back over it. Not a big deal. Okay, so I'm taped the whole way up around here and there's no sharp edges. And now we can get started. So let's take your 350s, whatever color you want, then blow up one that has about a 10 finger tail. And we're gonna start with this one, with a 10 finger tail, you're gonna make a little round ball size, golf ball size bubble, and we're gonna pinch twist it. So roll that in a circle, a nice little round circle, pull the knot really tight and turn it. 
And then what you want to do is take one of these, just to test it, wrap it around your balloon. If it's a little bit too long, we're going to start at the bottom of the bucket. And I can push the air, since mine was mushy, back into the balloon. And then you're going to tie it wherever that fits nice and snugly around the bottom of your bucket. So I'm going to tie it in two knots so it does not come undone. Just like this. And then I'm going to put it on the bottom of my bucket. And then take your little pinch twist that you made in the other balloon and wrap that around the crease. Flip it around one or two times. And then we're going to work our way up the back of the bucket. So the next one that I make, I need to make a little spacer bubble on this one. So we're gonna make another, probably a cherry tomato size bubble, like a little smaller, because you want the next balloon to fit nice and snug up against this other orange one. So make a little cherry tomato size bubble, and that's about two fingers. And then make a golf ball size bubble. Twist it around and pinch twist that. And to pinch twist it, just kind of pull it up and turn it. Twist that around and then just position it kind of like this. And then take your next balloon. Use ones that you made a little shorter because the bottom of the bucket is shorter and then it gets a little wider as you go up. And then you're going to test your next one. Take it around the bucket. <laughs> you don't want to have pruning shears and sharp rocks right under where you're working. Okay, I have my next row, and that fits pretty good around underneath that second one. And then we're going to tie it. And I think you get the idea. We're going to work our way the whole way down the bucket. So just keep going the next row and the next row and the next row. Make a little cherry tomato size bubble and then a golf ball size bubble and pinch twist it. And then the next row goes around. This is what it looks like so far. And you just are gonna push those together like this. I would not suggest using um, glue or anything because it could make these pop or weaken these. They should fit really nice around the bucket if you do this. In the last one you might want to blow up the whole way to the end and let a puff of air out. You might want to stretch it before you tie it because it looks like this very bottom part is just a little bit wider. So I have six total in my rows. Okay, and now I'm on my last row. At the top, just kind of push the air out and nip the ends. Let the air out and then tie it around your pinch twist. I do like to tie everything two times so it doesn't come undone. And the last row will sit around here. Tie it first and then kind of stretch it on there. in it. I made some just to kind of show you. And then whatever you use to weight your balloons down, 
you can tie a couple uninflated 260s around these have nice little grooves in them so I just tied it all really good and tied these all together so that whatever you put in your bucket or your flower pot you can weight down so I have this and then you can take your sculpture or your flowers or whatever you have for your bucket and then you just tie them in here now I did put an uninflated 260 up here to kind of hold everything together until I put a bow on it but I'm gonna cut that off now and you can fill this out of course with whatever like I can make this thicker which is probably a better idea but I just wanted to show you for now tie your sculpture or whatever you have that you want in your pot to the bottom of those uninflated balloons and then set them in there and if you don't have that completely filled out you can use another round balloon inside of your bucket pick up the top kind of hold everything together Or maybe you want it like black or dark brown to look like dirt for your flowers, for your flower pot, which is a good idea too. I just stuck an orange one in there for now. Okay, here is the man-eating plant from Little Shop of Horrors that I made. And it's huge. So I wanted to show you what I did instead of using a weight to put it in my vase. I just put it right on a stand and then I put the stand in the base. And I might use um, 260 and go around and make bubbles and put it in there for the dirt, which I think I'm going to do. And I didn't really tuck these in good until I get there, the little curls, but... That is my man-eating plant, and I'll show you what I did. So I'm not really done with this. It looks like this one's losing air, and I don't want this to show, so I'm probably going to add a new dark blue one around my bucket because I don't want that to show. But it's literally just one of those uh, little lamp stands, and it's just sitting right in there behind. And I'm going to take these curls and just kind of wrap them around here and hide that stand. It's going to be in the back anyway. And so I'm going to do that when I get there. But I wanted to show you, you can just build whatever you want and stick it right down in your balloon face. And this is, um, somebody Google searched Little Shop of Horrors balloon. So this is my take on Twistina's balloon little shop of horrors man-eating plant so this is what i came up with they sent me a picture of hers and i modified it a little bit and that's what i came up with and here are your flowers in a pot I hope you liked my video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll keep them coming. I'll see you in the next video.